All right, so this was our Mule application. And now we're going to add some testing. Let me do a quick recap. Uh, so we have the Maxine's blog API, which is kind of like the main flow. Uh, we have the API key router. We have all of the error handling. And we have the different flows that go into the flow references that are separated here in the resources part. I also was not able to finish the whole implementation of this thing, but hopefully I can do that maybe in September or in October, so we can check that out later. All right, so there's that. Um, then we have global.xml where we have all of our global configuration elements like API SO discovery, the object store configuration, the global property, and the HTTP listener, and so on. I also created a common um, file where, in theory, I was going to put here all of the flows that would be reused by other files. I ended up just creating one to check if there is a 404 and send the 404. Um, but in theory, this is where all the common stuff would be. And then we have resources articles where we have been keeping all of our logic for resources and categories, which are the only two things I, I have implemented so far. So there's that. Um, oh, and also IDs. I kept this flow where I was going to keep all of the IDs. Um, but I, again, I just did it for article. Well, you can kind of see how it works. Um, comments is kind of empty, practically empty, and writers, same thing. So, yes, that's what we have so far. All right, so let's create an unit to make sure that this flow is working properly. So, first, manually, let's go here to new. Sorry, here in search test M unit, right click on it, select new, and then M unit test. So this will ask you to add the name. Um, let's name this common test suite because it's the name of the file that we're going to create. You can name this however you prefer. Common test suite. Yeah, I guess. And then I don't want to add anything, so I'm just going to check here, create empty test for now and finish. So this is going to actually change some stuff, especially in the palm, because it's going to add the new stuff. All right, so what we just did for the M units changed our pump. It added here M unit version. I hope you can see that. It added here M unit version, whatever version. Um, and then it added here a plugin for MuleSoft M unit tools. So you can also add this manually if you can. Um, here we will use this for the CICD part, but I just wanted to show you what it added automatically. So for example, here it's adding an execution ID test, phase test, and then there's a configuration for the coverage. In this case, run coverage is true and the format is HTML. And finally here as dependency, it added three new dependencies, MuleSoft M unit, MuleSoft M unit, Oh, sorry, M unit runner, M unit tools, and assertions. That's what it added. That's pretty much it for the palm. And of course, it also created our new test, common test suite. So that's all it added. And now, here on our common test suite, we can start creating stuff. You will notice here that it we have two new modules in the mule palette we have M unit and we have M unit tools. So if we select M unit tools, we will see things like assert, um, DQ, clear storage, store data. I think this is mostly for like Q or like to, yeah. You can also sleep. 
run custom, mug when, fail, we will see some of these. And then if you select M unit, you will see, for example, you can set an event. Remember what we were talking about where you have the mule event and it has like um, the mule message and it has the variables and the payload and attributes and all that. So here, if you select this, you will be able to set a specific event. You can also select after suite, before suite, the test, and so on. So these are mostly scopes and two operations. Um, you will be using more the MUnit tools, which have all the asserts, basically. So let's start with the MUnit module and select here test. So we drag and drop it to the canvas, and this creates an empty test, which is basically kind of like a flow. Instead of having a flow, we have one test. So um, let's check here. So this choice, we will we want to check if this choice is working in both routes, right? So this is checking if the payload is empty, as you can see here, then it will go here. If it is not empty, then it will go here. So let's create first a test that will be called um how can i okay common test suite and then i'm gonna use my naming convention stuff to put a colon at the end you can name this however you want just as long as you recognize what this test is doing that's good enough here the naming conventions they don't matter that much because this is just running the test, you can kind of go and see where it's going. For the flows, it's more important though, because you can see all of the flows in a list in a drop down or stuff like that. And here, it's really you only see these at the report. So it is good to name them descriptively, but it's not as like important. So let's say here, I don't know, empty payload, for example. So common test suite, empty payload, or wait. This flow was named common check 404. Yeah, maybe I'm going to add the name of the flow for me to be able to know what I'm testing. Okay. So this is how I decided common test suite, colon. Um, check 404, empty payload, like this. You can name this however you want. All right, so then I need to set up a payload that is totally empty. So I believe, yeah, here's an operation in the MUnit module that says set null payload. So we're going to select that and put it in execution <laughs> yes so in the part here it goes the behavior like mocks and spies i will uh, let you know what that is in the execution is where basically kind of as if you had a flow like where you put all of the steps that it's gonna do and validation is where you do the asserts like to make sure that something happened so for example here we're gonna start setting a null payload and then we're going to call this flow, the common check 404. So after setting the null payload, we're going to use a flow reference, a regular flow reference, put it here. And now we're going to call common. Uh, where is common? Ah, here. Common check 404. So now we have this flow ref. I'm going to put the name of the flow on the display name so I remember what I'm running. And we have the execution, send null payload, and run this thing. So run this whole flow, soft flow, basically. This will result in an error not found, hopefully. So how was it? There was a way to check that there was an error. Ah, here, expect failure. If you click on, on the whole test, just click on this, 
And here in the properties, you will be able to see here an expect failure part. So we are expecting a failure in this case. So what is the type of failure that we are expecting? Um, we are raising here an error of the type custom not found. So this is the type. Let's copy it. And now here expect error type. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be here because it's custom. So I'm just going to write it here. Custom not found in the expected error type. Um, expected error description. I also expect an error description here. No. Am I? I don't remember. That's all right. I can leave it like that. And there's that. I also want to check the variables, I guess. Yeah, because I'm setting the HTTP status 404 and the error description as some string. So if I come here, there should be... Assert... Yeah, here's an assert equals. So we can select that one, for example, and put it here in the validation part. I think it will get to the assert, even though we're putting here the expect failure, but we'll see. So assert equals, um, and then here we are expecting it to be... No. It's creating it in a variable called HTTP status. So let's take the name of the variable and let's put here in the actual. This is vars.htp status. So this is the actual result that it's going to see if it is what we are expecting. And then in the expected, we are expecting a 404 like this. So expected vars.htp status. No, expected for a four actual bars dot http status and you can also add a message like this was not the same or this was the same or whatever you prefer assert http status equals 404 this is the name that i'm gonna give it so i remember what this is doing and that's it let's test to see if this works all right it worked so we can see where can we see the result double check no there was a way to get ah here in m unit coverage there is a show coverage part and then generate report you can generate that and you can also see like we are just testing 75% of the common file because we are only testing. Also, if we go back to this file, you will see that there is now this small green check. That means that it went through this route and it tested this. So now we have to test this other part in order for us to have 100% on the M unit coverage. Now we want to have this green check mark in this part as well. So now let's create another test going here to MUnit and selecting test, drag and drop it here. And I'm going to copy the same name. And I'm just going to change. Uh, not. Yeah. Not empty payload. So it's the same thing. I just added not <laughs> empty payload. Okay. So now we are going to set an event. So I can also set a payload if I remember. Kind of. So here, for example, you can use from core. Um, you can use the set payload connector. So you can actually set just the payload or you can use the set event from here. Just for the sake of having fun, let's set the event so we can see how that looks like. 
So here at the bottom, we have payload, attributes, error, in variables. So here you can actually modify all of these things to your will. So whatever you need for your test, you can set it up here. I guess this will be... Maybe this will take a little bit more time than just doing the site payload, but whatever you want to do. And this just has to not be empty, so it can be whatever you want. Let's just set up here a value in the payload that is going to say, I'm not empty. Ah, ha, ha. So I'm not empty. That's what it says. Media type. We can put also here, let's say, JSON, for example. So media type is JSON encoding. I'm just going to leave it like that. Hopefully it doesn't do anything bad. And the event is not empty payload. All right. So we have the not empty payload. We are setting up the not empty payload. And then we have to do this same flow reference. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. There we go. So we have the common check 404. And now here, instead of asserting disks, actually, since it's just going to go this other way, it's just a logger. It's not actually doing anything. It's not changing the payload and it's not raising an error. So it's just going through here. So I guess um, we could use... Maybe spy. Well, no, not really, because it's the same thing. Well, for this case, we can just do the assert that the payload is not empty. So, uh, assert that. Yeah, assert that. And we already have here in is. It says mUnit tools, not node value. In expression, we're just going to put here payload. So assert that payload is not empty. Well, not null. And actually, I'm going to remove this and leave just payload is not null. All right, payload is not null. And here I can also remove the assert because here already says assert. Assert equals HTTP status equals 44. Assert that payload is not null. Okay. So after we run this, we should see here the green mark in the 100% in the common file. And we had an error. So the 404 empty was green, so that one worked. But the 404 not empty was red. So something went wrong there. Um, where can I see? Oh, here. I don't know why this is so small. Can I move it here, actually? Yes, I can. So here in the mUnit errors, you can kind of see what's happening. Um, while running tests, unexpected character. Oh. While reading payload. How come? All right, so you know what? I'm just going to set payload. I don't know if I did something weird there. So set payload and the value is going to be. I'm not empty. And let's remove this thing. Save this. Let's see if that works. All right, that worked. So there was something wrong that I did probably. But now both of our tests run and if we go to the common flow, we will see that now it has a green mark. So we run everything correctly. And now if we generate the report and we take a look at common.xml, we will see that this is now 100% covered, which is awesome. So you can kind of continue doing that for the rest of the things, but it's going to get... Harder and harder, I guess.
we can try probably categories and the important part here is that you don't want to connect to the object store directly you want this to be mocked because if for whatever reason the object store is like you cannot connect to it the last thing you want is for your unit test to start failing because of an external dependency this is kind of an external dependency even though the object store is inside MuleSoft. It's kind of an external dependency, like it could be a database, it could be Salesforce, it could be Workday, it could be something else that you're connecting to. And if those services are unavailable for some reason, you don't want it to do anything to do with your M units because these are unit testing. So what we can do, for example, here in categories, um let's try to do one simple one so we can see how to mock in all of that so first of all let's create a new m unit because we created the common test suite but this is the resources categories so let's create a new m unit test file and this is gonna be resources categories um test suite so resources categories test suite um create empty test and finish all right also you can just try creating tests not from scratch i just like to do it because uh, i'm very used to it <laughs> so let's create here a new test and we can try with read categories for example so uh yes resources categories test suite and let's just put read categories like this okay so what do we need here it starts it sets the category name that comes from attributes query params category name so we do have to add attributes here so we do need now to set an event so set the event and the attribute is gonna be so query params category name we're gonna retrieve that attributes value let's click on this fx thing and you can oh you cannot see let me show you wait wait no no <laughs> so here in attributes we have here we clicked on the fx thing and this button appears here which says show graphical view so you can click on it to kind of see a did weave screen i guess so you can work on your did weave expressions more easily so we wanted to get query params dot category name in the attributes right so for this first i'm gonna put output application json and then the three dashes and then here this is gonna be an object query params and then another object category name and now this category name um what do we want to extract for example what are we doing with this category name anyway uh so query params category name and then oh it's optional we don't have to put it okay this is only gonna retrieve like yeah okay so in this case it's empty as data wave if i don't send anything uh we have exercise so if i set the category name as exercise we end up with this okay so let's add the attribute did it get deleted oh man output application json dot 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 
uh, and then we said query params um, category name let's do exercise for now all right done and this is gonna be set query params set query param and that's all we don't need variables and we don't need a payload right because it doesn't have any payload here yeah so it's gonna get here it's gonna extract the category name and it's gonna create a variable so for example we want to double check that this variable gets created after it runs this transform message for example so if we go here we can use something that is called a spy so let's take that spy and put it here in behavior and now we need to add the processor so click on pick processor and then we were on resources categories resources categories and it was read categories and okay so if you double click on this subflow resources category subflow it will show you what are the attributes that you can select from so for example there's a name um read categories or the doc oh wait it's not oh never mind so i have to go here oh this sucks okay resources categories okay it's here resources ah i can this is resources articles i can make this smaller resources ids make it smaller now resources categories okay and now we just have to search for read categories which is this one this is a flow and then inside we have the start logger then the category name so it's kind of like giving you all of the elements inside the flow and what we want is to check this category name transform message so let's select that and you can select the name that matches category name which i don't recommend you do because you can always change the name of the component even if you already have the m units which sucks so i would recommend you go to the id instead of the name because the id well it's more unique so let's select it also if you have like two transform messages with the same name category name i i believe it won't like it can get confused because there are two with the same name so if you go with doc id you're safe because it's never gonna change even though you can change the name so select the doc id from the category name and click ok so now here you have the doc id and this is the the value you can also double check if you go here into the component that you wanted select go to xml it will open here where it says transform message category name and then here is a doc id so you can also just copy this doc id which is unique for every single one of the components so you can copy that and you can also put it here in the attribute name so let me remove this if i add attribute name this is going to be doc id and the value is this so we end up with basically the same thing all right so spy on the category name transform message that's what i'm gonna name it category name tran transform message so I remember what I'm running here, what I'm spying on. <laughs> so before the call, there was no variable called category name. We are creating the category name variable. So after the call, there has to be a category name. And for that, we can use assert equals. Yeah, assert equals actual is going to be vars dot category name and expected 
is going to be what I sent, which was exercise, I believe. In the attribute, exercise, yes, exercise. In this case, you do want to card code things because you want to be 100% sure that this is doing what you want it to do. So, all right, we have exercise and we're going to check uh, bars dot category name equals exercise. And maybe just category name equals exercise. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember if I have to put something before call or if I can just leave the after call. So we'll see. Anyway, I just want to make sure that after this runs, this variable gets created with the specific thing that I put and so on. Like you don't have to check every single one of the components. It really depends on what you're trying to check or you're trying to test for your code. If this is not that relevant for your code, you can just leave it be. It's still going to run because we know that it's going to run this whole flow. So it's most likely going to create the variable. I just want to make sure that it takes it from the query params. Um, I don't know. I just want to make sure that it works, for example. Uh, then we go to the retrieve categories, go to the reference flow, which is here. And here, I don't want to run this. I don't want this to be able to actually run. First, I'm going to leave it like that so you can see what happens when you leave it like that. Um, then return filter payloads. Okay. And then the end. So in the assert equal, in the final thing, you want assert equals. And then actual. Well, expected. Let me open this. Output application JSON. Da, da, da. This is the expected. This is what I'm expecting to receive back. This is a hard coded version. And the actual is going to be payload. So whatever is in the payload has to match that. And payload. All right, let's save this and let's run it. And we had an error. What's the error? It didn't run because you don't see the green checks. Uh, cannot coerce function to string. Array size is one, but was zero. Okay. Okay, this is good. This is what I want to show you. So let's now debug this at breakpoint and run this. Oh, shoot. It was debug, not run. Debug. Come on. Okay, so we're here and let's go into the flow. So it goes into category name. Before we go into category name, let's check the attributes. And we do have query params, category name, exercise, the media types, application, JSON. So in theory, we should be fine. Maybe this should not be JSON. We'll see. So category name. Uh, what happened? Oh, okay. And it created the variable category name with exercise. So good. This is working. Oh, I guess it went into the assert 
from here. So this is working because we are checking that bars category name matches. And if we evaluate this, this is exercise, which is what we want. So, okay, it should be good. Otherwise it should have already failed and it didn't. So let's continue. Now it will go into the object store. Notice here that our payload is actually null right now. And now it will try to go into the object store and retrieve the categories. So let's see what happens. It went into there and the payload is still null. It didn't actually get anything from there. So then when it continues doing stuff, the payload is now an empty array because it doesn't have anything. So now we go back here and we are trying to assert that the payload is something specifically that we said like exercise, but it's not. So it's going to fail. Because that's what that's not what it was expecting at all. So because of that, because you are depending on an external system, you should use a mock instead of actually calling the system because if this is empty then there's nothing there the other thing that you could do if you did want to actually test the system since it starts empty you should create first the category and then read it and then you will be able to retrieve it you can create like a whole thing so for now i'm just gonna create uh and we also verified that it creates the variable that we need with the name exercise, which is great. So now we're going to add the mock. If we go, where is it? Ah, here. Mock when in unit tools. Let's select that and put it here. Here, it doesn't really matter. You can put the mock here or here. I know there are some arrows here, uh, which gives you the impression that one is going to go before the other one. But it doesn't really matter. Just put the mock wherever you want to put it. I'm going to put it here. Just put it wherever you want. And here I'm going to mock the, what's the name? Categories. I can just go and get directly, go to XML. Uh, here, categories. This is the doc ID. Ah. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, doc ID here. So we will retrieve that so we can use it in the mock. Same as before, basically. So here, let's click here on the add doc ID and value is that. So attribute name, doc ID, where value is equals to this. Okay, there's that. And I also want to name this so I don't forget what this is doing. Retrieve categories. Retrieve categories. Oh, it removed my thing. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> Let's just pick it. Uh, so we were in resources categories. Retrieve categories. This one. Uh, so here we have more attributes, actually. We have doc name, categories, doc ID, which is the one that I want, key, object store, target. But right now I'm just going to select doc ID, that, okay. It will add it here to the list of attributes. And then if we scroll down, now we have here a section that says then return. So basically, when you encounter this doc ID, you have to return something else. In this case, I want it to return exactly this. Or even more. I can put more if I want. So let's do that. Then return payload value. And let's make this bigger. Output application JSON. Dot, dot, dot. Exercise. Let's also return MuleSoft and DataWeave because I just want to check that the filter is working correctly. So done, save, and the validation should still be exercised because we are using a query parameter, right? 
So let's run this. And it's a failure. <laughs> Why? Expected array type, but null. Maybe the mock didn't work. Payload. Oh, well, this is also creating a variable categories. Okay, so let's do that then. Instead of putting this in the payload, it actually has to be in a variable called categories. Oh my god, okay, hold on. Now let me copy this whole thing, remove this. Variables, categories, edit, and this should be the value. Okay, media type, application, JSON. Okay. All right, hopefully that works. Let me check the configuration XML just in case. Where value, variable, categories. Okay. I don't know if that's going to work. I hope so. Let me run that, and while that runs, I am gonna go back and check what did I do then? Mock when with attributes and return. Okay, so I was using. Okay. Wait. No, because this is gonna be a string if I leave it like that. So, variables, categories, edit. Um, this, wait, no, cancel. Let's go here. So, this has to be application JSON, da da da. And now, Exercise, comma, MuleSoft, comma, data weave, and finish, and this. So everything that I put here is enclosed in like this syntax, hashtag, square brackets, and then this thing. So hopefully that works. I see an error already. Yeah. Oh my god, okay. The other way that I use, usually do is that I actually use a file here. So you know what? Let me try to do that because maybe I'm doing something wrong. Oh, wait. Output. Ah, output application JSON and then I have my thing. Okay, never mind. Run. Now it should work. And I am way over time here, but oh well. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna po um, cover Postman now because we want to focus on MuleSoft. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And for the CICD, I'm just gonna show you really quick. You can just watch this video to make sure how this works. Um, let me put the link here and I'm also gonna put it in the repo once I'm done. Okay, uh, so you have to set up your credentials. As you can see, this is using Nexus username and password. This will be different though, because we had set up our credentials as MFA. I don't remember how I taught you to use it, but just make sure that you put up your credentials. And this will be now a different build.yaml than the one that I had showed you before. This will include 
the test job here. So it's going to test everything first and then it's going to build and deploy. This is basically what is changing. We're adding also a settings.xml inside maven settings.xml, which is this. And we are also modifying the POM. So unfortunately, I don't have any more time, so I'm not going to go into this in detail. You can check that out. This is green. So, OK, we got this working. And I am also going to show you how to do files, because I normally do files, as I showed you in a moment. So here in search test resources, let's create a new folder first. I'm going to call this categories. Well, resources, categories. And inside this, I'm going to create a new file called, I don't know, um, all, all categories array dot json all categories array dot json finish and you know what i'm gonna just put refactor rename just categories instead of resources categories categories because i want to make my life easier so okay inside search test resources we have the folder categories and inside there we have the all categories array dot json so here Let's put what we had put here in variables, or better yet, from here. So we had the array exercise meals of data weave. Let me put it here. Uh, can I just format this thing? I don't think so. Oh, well. All right, so this is a JSON file with the expected thing that I have from exercise mills of data with, for example. So these are all of those. And I was using the read URL. Let me just copy this and put it there. So I still have the output application JSON dot dot dot. And after that, instead of having the payload here directly, I'm just going to reference to that file. So from class path, uh, categories, and then the file is all categories, array.json. Okay. Why is this not working? Ah. Yeah. Okay. So... Now, if I run it like this, I will be able to retrieve whatever I have in this file and check it out. So that's another way to do it. You can also do it with the payload here. So if you want to just put like a different payload, you can also put it there. I normally do this, especially when there are huge payloads. For example, if I were to test the get articles one, it's this huge payload, so I don't want to put this huge payload into that tiny little window. So I will create here a file with that payload and then do the assert equals to that file instead of doing it directly here. That's what I would do. So if you want to check some examples of other, uh, other projects, I also have this my process API M units repo where I did some um, unit stuff so you can also check that out this was green so this worked perfectly and now we can check the green marks here if we check the generate report now we are testing 35 percent of the resources categories notice how common is not here because we are just running this one file but we can run all the tests from here. Search test M unit, right click on it, M unit, run tests, and it will run all of the files. So here, as you can see, now we have the common test suite and the resources categories test suite running.
and they will also run uh, not synchronously, so asynchronously. So if you need uh, for the tests to run one by one, you will have to do something different because right now all of the tests are running independent of each other. So here now, if we check the report, we can see 100% in common and 35% in resources categories, basically. All right. So that's it. Um, I believe there was an MUnit recorder that I never used and I don't know how to create one, <laughs> but otherwise I would show you. Anyway, that's all about creating your M units and testing them here. If you want to test them from your studio, you don't need the Rexus Nexus repository credentials. You can just do what I'm doing right now. But if you want to incorporate them into a CICD pipeline, you have to follow this and you have to have those credentials beforehand. So those are only for enterprise um, uh, accounts. Sorry, brain freeze. Those are only for enterprise accounts. So if you don't have an enterprise account, you are not going to be able to run them in CACD. But you can do this. So you can also continue doing your uh, coverage and continue checking to see that you are testing all the possible scenarios. All right, that's all then for today's thing. <laughs> ah, we just did MUnit manually. I kind of showed you MUnit CICD. We didn't do Postman at all. And I didn't mention bad CLI at all, but that's fine because you're just getting started. Um, so this is usually what you do when you're just getting started doing the MUnits manually. All right, so that is all then for this session. And that is all then for this series as well. As I told you in the beginning of the video, in case you didn't see it, I will not be able to upload the edited versions of session eight and nine. So the last one in today's one until the latest of September or in October, because I am very busy right now with Dreamforce and vacations. So sorry about that. But you have the full version that you can watch. Yes, it will be kind of lengthy, but it's something. <laughs> All right. That is all then. I hope this was helpful. And remember that on October, I do Code Tober. So if you haven't watched my Code Tober videos, go, go into my ProsDev channel in YouTube, search for the Code Tober playlist, and you will see a ton of short videos of me doing random stuff. In Code Tober 2021, I mostly did Data Weave. But in Code Tober 2022, I tried to make more stuff with other technologies. So you can also try check that out. And on October, I will see you. Basically, I create one video a day for the whole month of October. Sometimes I pre-record them, to be honest with you, because who has the time to do one video a day, realistically speaking? But I will publish one video a day in October. All right, that's all then for this session and this series. I hope this was helpful for your Millsoft journey. And I'm sorry that I was not more prepared and you had to see all of my errors, but I really hope it is helpful. And there are a lot more resources from the community that you can also watch um, that are more prepared than me. <laughs> so you can also check that out for your journey. And hopefully I can continue serving you with more awesome content maybe more polished so you have less issues doing stuff but i like doing live stuff you can kind of see how i troubleshoot like right now that i google something all right that's all then for today and the series i will see you then maybe in september maybe in october <laughs> we'll see thank you all for watching i really appreciate you bye